Hello guys, so welcome to chapter 7, Transport in Plants. Now this is unlike any chapter you have studied before. Previously, we have looked at microorganisms, we looked at cells, we looked at DNA. It's all really precise biomolecular stuff, right? But now we are looking at big systems, which means we're talking about organisms. So um, before we talk about transport though, we do need to talk about plant anatomy. So we need to know how it looks like, what tissues they are before we actually even discuss transport. So let's get to it now. This is part 1A, plant anatomy. Okay, so there are three organs of the plant. Um, they are not lungs, liver, and things like that. But hey, they have leaves, they have a stem, and they have roots. Now, each part of the plant looks very different, as you can see in the picture. The most important part is the xylem and phloem, and we'll learn about these de positions and details in a lot more detail. But just before we start, I just want to say that everything we learn about plants here is about dicots only, dicotyledonous plant anatomy only. Monocotyledonous plants have a similar support system, transport system, but their xylem and phloem are placed slightly differently, so they will look different from this diagram. Okay, so let's talk about each um, organ in detail. Now, to look at the organ, we can't just look on the outside. We have to be able to cut and um, see it in a microscope as well. So we can, um, you know, cut it two ways, transverse section and a longitudinal section. So transverse section is across and longitudinal section is usually a lengthways, right? Now, of course, carrots are also roots, so I like use a carrot as an example and this is me magically breaking it so this here is a transverse section you can see is round let's take a closer look about what is going on in this little round carrot here we have two circles uh, mainly we have this light purple one outside called the epidermis the root hairs are actually uh, not a not a cell, it is a part of the epidermal cells. We can see this one cell here, it has a cytoplasmic extension that extends out to become root hairs. Now, there are some root hairs in my carrot here, but you probably can't see it through the camera. I can though, with my naked eyes. You can ask one from your mom, I guess. Okay, anyways, after the epidermis with the endodermis, in between that, there is something called the cortex. Okay, between the epidermis and the endodermis, there is a cortex, and within the endodermis, there is the xylem and phloem. The xylem is in the middle here, so if you see the middle part of the carrot, this area in the middle, this is not the endodermis, this is the xylem. The endodermis on the carrot is not that obvious. Okay, I can tell you for sure that the endodermis is a layer of cells on the outside, inside xylem, phloem on the outside of the xylem, and then surrounding that, is what we call the pericycle. Okay, so this is the transverse section of the root. Now, if you look at a longitudinal section of the root, it will look slightly different. Longitudinal section of the root, um, well, you actually can, you know, see the details inside and be able to label them based on what you know in the transverse section. But besides those things, okay, like phloem, xylem, parasite, and the dermis, right, there is also this area called the root cap. And the root hairs are not shown here, but if they do have it, they have very different properties with the root cap. And that we will also explore later in this chapter. But you need to know where it is first. The layers inside here you can also distinguish. You can see the epidermis outside here. Inside this layer is the endodermis, this thicker, darker these stained ones and inside there it's not very clear to see what is what here but this is definitely the vascular bundle now let's take a little zoom in on the root this is a transverse section so back to our round round thing again this is a zoom in real life diagram a micrograph of what is going on and you can see this xylem is has a thicker wall it's quite stained quite red and it is in the middle uh, of the Root. Um, the outside layer here is the endodermis. So this is a zoom in picture, as I said. And the one's labeled S is the phloem. I'm going to leave um, the rest of the setting to you. Now let's look at quickly at the stem. The stem, 
Again, we have two ways to cut it. We can cut it transverse section or longitudinal section. It will look like, if it's transverse, it will look like something round like this. And longitudinal is basically the same thing, but you have to imagine it longitudinally instead. So let's dive into that. So a stem, what is going on there? Now, it doesn't look like the root at all, besides the fact it is round the outside. Yes, it has the epidermis, but it doesn't have the endodermis. It doesn't have the circle inside a circle. In, instead, it has this um, many, many um, vascular bundles lined up in a circle. Forming a circle. Okay, the xylem is always on the inner layer. You can see where it's labeling here in the phloem is on the uh, more outer layer. The ones in red are different types of cells that you don't need to know of. Now, right outside there, it's the, it's the cortex again and then the epidermis. Now, in the middle here, which is this white area you can see, is the pith. And the pith just divides and stores, and the cells there just store stuff and things like that. So that's the stem. And if you zoom in and you look at different species of plants, they will look slightly different but mostly the same. You can see that there is definitely an epidermis that's surrounding the outside. You can see the different muscle bundles and see a huge space in the middle, which is the thing. This is a zoom in version of image and I'll leave you to label each one of this as practice. You can show me and take a picture and show me if you want to double check. Now you take that and you would slice it longitudinally and you can get this kind of structure, okay? So outside, the most outside on both sides is the epidermis and then right after that is the cortex. And right after that, it's quite hard to see here, but there's a vascular bundle. Now I'm pretty sure this red color state ones are xylem. It's usually red, like, thin, like pinkish red like this. And right outside that is the flow of Okay, the xylem is always on the inner layer, and of course, on the most inner layer, there is the pith. On the other side, it is the same as this. So this is like a mirror image of what's going on. Now, if we take that section there, though, and we zoom in closer, and we will see this kind of structure. Now, again, we zoom in right here. So this is actually the pith on the right-hand side. We can see the xylem has these crazy bands that are really pretty, isn't it? There are are rings, so there are spirals, and this is called a reticulated pattern, like a reticulated giraffe, sort of spotty appearance. Looks like a neck, right? And these bands are actually formed by lignin, a substance found in xylem. Um, we will talk more about that later, but out there is not very clear um, here, and honestly, I cannot tell, but I'm pretty sure somewhere on the left there, there will be phloem. Um, and probably further down, not in the diagram, would be the cortex and the epidermis. So that's the longitudinal section of the stem. Sometimes they can show you pictures like this and ask you to identify where the xylem is. Now just look for the darker stained ones, especially in a non-colored black and white diagram. And the areas where have this crazy bending pattern or spotty pattern like this is probably the xylem. If it's not obvious, they won't ask you. So. Uh, okay, now we're going to our last organ, the leaf. <clears throat> so, the leaf has this midrib that goes down to the middle. And we don't need to know the longitudinal section because it's ridiculous now. Um, let's just do a transverse section. And I know you know this pretty well because we drew it in lab a few times. So, here are all the words. The palisade, the spongy, the upper, lower, the epidermis. Xylem's on top. There's a cambium that's in between xylem and phloem. And this is also found in the, the stem, actually. And then there's the phloem. Um, this is part of cells here called colon chyma cells, which we'll talk about a little while, just a little while more. Just barely. No pun intended. Okay, so if you look at the leaf of different species, you will realize that they will have different, uh, slightly different sort of patterns. Uh, this is obviously just a uh, a uh, leaf rotated a lot wrongly um, on the wrong, yeah, it has to be rotated at 180 degrees. Uh, and many of you know that because you drew this in the labs and then I made you erase it and draw it again into this correct positioning. You can see here clearly of the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll going on here. And right here you can see in red actually it's the stomata with a gap in between them and the two gut cells lining them. So the stomata is made of two guard cells. We'll also 
go into further detail of each of the structures later on. You just need to know where it is and how it looks like. Now, as I said again, um, the best, I, I think I said this before, but the best way to practice looking at stuff is to look at more of it. So practice um, labeling these diagrams with different labels. And if you need me to check, just message me and I will let you know. <clears throat> so that is the three different organs and the tissues in it. Now the tissues um, are made up of different cells, obviously. Um, and these tissues also have different categories. So this tissue, plant tissue has three types, a dermal vascular and ground tissue. Dermal is like epidermal, endodermal tissue, a vascular tissue, and basically xylem phloem. Everything other than xylem phloem, epidermis, endodermis is considered as ground tissue. Now, ground tissue has three types. There's parenchyma, colenchyma, and sternchyma. You don't need to know a lot of detail about this other than to recognize and know how to describe the structure. So parenchyma here has a thinner cell wall, colenchyma has a thicker, and sternchyma has a thicker cell wall. Now, um, that's because the functions are slightly different, right? The functions of parenchyma cell is the normal functions you know of, the photosynthesis, storage, cell division, but colenchyma and sternchyma have structural support as its function. That's why it needs a thicker cell wall. Now, where are these cells found? Parenchyma cells are basically all mesophyll cells. So palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll are types of parenchyma cell, cells are parenchyma cells as well as some cortical cells. Now, different parts of the cortex, which is cortical cells, different parts of the cortex would have different um, sort of um, types of cells as well because again, tissue is a collection of different cells, right? So colenchyma here could be the outer cortical cells. So the outer layers have structural support. You know, the ones that your mom make you like peel off the outside of a broccoli or peel off outside of a stem um, to make it softer, those are actually colenchyma cells and fibers that you are shaving off. Um, those are harder cells. Inside is usually quite tender. And then of harder stems and tree branches, so the really, really old trees and really, really big trees, they actually have a lot of colenchyma cells, which are not even living, uh, but has a very good support. X has a very good support. So that's ground tissue for you. Again, you just need to know them um, roughly. You don't really need to know a lot of detail. Now the star here is really the xylem and phloem and where they are placed. Now I want to go back a few slides and show you um, where they are placed in the leaf, the stem and the root. On xylem, I always think xylem is king. He's always on top or inside. You know, the king is always like, hey, I'm on top of everyone or please protect me, I'm on the inside. Right, sort of thing. Um, don't write an exam, but xylem is always on the top or the inside. So in the leaf, it's on the top near the upper epidermis. Um, for xylem and the stem and root, they are on the inside, facing the inward layer, inner layers. So that is like the most important thing. Now let's go through um, the structure of xylem and phloem now. Again, tissues are made of many cells, and xylem tissue and phloem is a tissue as well. So there are different types of cell and xylem tissue, which you don't really need to know about, but it's found in your textbook. Uh, it, xylem actually has pop Xylem cells actually look very different like this. Now the most a major one are xylem elements or xylem vessels, which look like these thick tubes. They look like PVC pipes to me with like a sinkhole on the top. But anyways, uh, tracheids and fibers and parenchyma cells, these are not that important. But the most important is the vessel elements, which we'll learn in detail soon. Now, again, phloem is also a tissue and they are different types. But there are sieve tube elements, joint end to end to form sieve tube. So there are many, many elements. So one element is one cell, and they form a tube together. And there's also another type of cell called companion cell. Whew. So let's look at xylem. Now, xylem tissue in general functions to hey, number one, act as a structural support and also transport water. So they are structural, they are needed for structural support and they transport water. Okay, so this is the more detailed version of the appearance under microscope in words. Cell wall has lignin bands, as I said. 
in addition to cellulose. So they still have cellulose, which is permeable to water uh, and a lot of substances actually. But in addition to that, they have lignin. Lignin, different from cellulose, is that it's waterproof. It's strong, it's hard, it makes the xylem a pipe. <laughs> okay? And but these bands can have different patterns. So as we said just now, as you saw just now as well, there are some that are spiral, there's some like rings, there's one on reticulate, there's one spotty. You can have many, many designs. You can see here that this is clearly a ring structure right here. Pretty cool, right? Oh. Um, obviously, as we talked about just now, xylem has a thicker cell wall and they usually are stained red. Usually by this dye called safranin. Okay, so this is just to help you recognize it when you see it in the exams. Okay, so out of all the, all the cells in this tissue, we are gonna talk about xylem vessels, which are also known as vessel elements. Now xylem, again, think of a series of tubes. They are elongated cells drawing end to end. So you can, like collection of a tube to make a very, very long tube. And, um, they have a few structural fe features. Now, um, Cambridge likes to ask, how is this structure related to its function? So here is the unpacking of it. Now, xylem vessels are non-living, and I know you know this already, but here's a reminder. It has no cytoplasm, no organelles, and a very hollow lumen. Why do they need to do this? Because they transport water. Right? So they need more space for greater volume of transport. And of course, if there are less things in it as non-living, it's an empty tube. Okay, if it's living, there'll be stuff inside. If it's not living, it's an empty tube. So less resistance to flow of water. So xylem, dead material, man. They have thick cell walls. It's made of cellulose. Okay, lignin later. Let's talk about cellulose first. They have extra a lot of cellulose also. It is structural support and allows the adhesion of water. Remember we said that water in chapter 2 has cohesion and adhesion properties. Adhesion is it sticking to someone else, something else. Right? Cohesion means it sticks to itself. So adhesion of water is mainly in cellulose, two cellulose in plants. Okay, remember, remember. Adhesion of water, two cellulose. <clears throat> I like that they have lignin, which is usually stained red. Um, and this actually is a very hard substance that prevents invert collapse. So um, when water is being transported through the xylem vessels, it's actually going through a lot of pressure and pooling because they adhere to the wall, right? So it's pooling the wall so, uh, inwards towards itself. Okay, So the lignin prevents it from collapsing. And of course, it's also waterproof. What is a pipe without waterproofing, right? There is waterproof to prevent loss of water. Of course, in addition to no cytoplasm, there are also no end walls. Okay, the end walls here, but there, there, those end walls actually break down and that creates less resistance to the flow of water. And this creates a continuous tube that is strong. So far, we have learned strong waterproof joint end to end but of course water has to come in and out and stuff like that so other than you know having large lumen and large volume water they would have pits from formed from plasmodesmata so usually a living cell has plasmodesmata already but when the xylem is being formed this plasmodesmata would be converted into pits there are little holes in the xylem that has no lignin so they allow water to go in and out. So you must have an inlet and outlet, right? So these pits perform that function. What is lateral movement of water? It means sideways movement of water instead of horizontal. As we know, the xylem is uh, horizontal, moving upwards, okay, transporting water from the roots to the leaves of the plant. Um, the pits would allow the water to move to different parts of the plant instead of just upwards. Now, pits also allow um, um, sorry, pits also allow water to move out into another xylem vessel and bypass air when there's an air bubble blocking a vessel. So sometimes when the xylem is exposed to air, okay, usually it's contained within the plant, right? But when it's exposed to air, that can 
introduce air bubbles in the asylum. And because it's very, very small, if there's an air bubble introduced, it's going to be blocking the entire tube. The pits allow it to go up. Okay, let's say there's one here. The pits allow it to go sideways, then go back upwards. So it wouldn't stop um, the transport of water throughout the plant. Ta-da! So that's xylem vessels for you. That's a lot of information in a very short time. I know. I'm trying to get this video like shorter so that you know you are not bored. Let's talk about phloem. Okay. So phloem again, overall function is to transport assimilates. Now, what are assimilates? They are substances that are produced by photosynthesis. For example, sucrose or amino acids can be formed through photosynthesis, converted from glucose, obviously. And this is transported in phloem. We don't use transport of nutrients anymore. We are fancier now and we're in A levels, okay? And when does it transport stuff to these hybrids or from, right? From source to sink. Source, uh, in very simple words, is where it is produced, sucrose and amino acids are produced, and sink is where it's needed, where it's stored, or where it's used. And this process of transporting assimilates is called translocation, which we will learn in more detail in part two. Now, again, there are two forms of tissue, and they have two types of cell. Here we have sieve tube elements and companion cells. Sieve tube elements are elongated elements. Elongated um, cells also that are joined end to end. You realize that end to end is a common word here in bold and red, so it's probably important in both xylem and phloem. So they are both elongated cells joined end to end to form a continuous column, which is also important, which is called a sieve tube. Now, unlike, um, unlike xylem, sieve elements are living cells, uh, but it has like Particular structural features as well. They have many plasmodesmata, that's one. There are many holes in them. And they're not called pits, they're called plasmodesmata because it's still living. Uh, and it allows loading of sucrose. Loading means transport of sucrose, basically, from component cells. Okay, allows sucrose to come in from component cells. We'll see why later. Allows water entry as well. They have pretty strong cellular cell walls, uh, which gives it um, some structural integrity against excessive cell bulging, especially under pressure now when there is a lot of uh, sucrose and amino acids going into the floor, it's very likely to bulge um, because there is just too much fluid going on. Unlike a xylem wedge, tends to collapse in, sieve tube element tends to bulge out. Now it has a few organelles, um, not a lot though, okay, and it has cell wall. It has plasma membrane, it has a few mitochondria and ER, as you can see the diagram. But it has no nucleus, it has no ribosomes, it has no vacuoles, it has no tonoplast. It has no in, inside area. They're just like these peripheral cytoplasm. So this cytoplasm sticking to the walls right here. You can see a very big gray line. So why is this? Well, because there's just less resistance to flow. It's easier to transport things like that. And of course, it's easy to transport even more things containing those assimilates. Now, um, they have sieve plates. So unlike uh, xylem, xylem doesn't have an end wall, but sieve tube elements have a sieve plate, uh, which is a cell wall basically. It holds many sieve pores so that cytoplasms of cells are connected. So again, to reduce barrier or resistance to flow. And it also acts as a structural uh, feature Okay, so it is there um, push like supporting both sides of the wall and preventing cell from bulging under pressure. Now, in addition to that, that's very interesting. Um, sieve pores also become plugged with a substance called callos to prevent loss of flow and sap after damage. Now, this is like blood clotting. You know, blood clotting is you can't get a wound and it, you know your body tends to stick it back and make sure your cell is. You don't lose too much blood, you know, by blood clotting. But here we have clotting mechanisms in plants. Now, sieve pores become plugged with callos so that sieve tube will not lose any more flow and sap, and the flow and sap can be transported elsewhere in different ways. So that's pretty cool. So let's look at a sieve tube element in a microscope diagram. So I saw xylem a lot already. So this is a 
transverse section, and you know because um, the C plate is very obviously seen here as Kellos is stained red ish at this plate. Um, and it's obviously this way around, so you can see downwards. We're looking downwards towards these um, sieve tubes right here. Um, it's, I don't know what that is at the side, but I definitely know that this sieve plate here is definitely shows that this is a sieve tube. Again, they won't ask you anything that is not obvious. They will only point at the obvious ones for you to identify. Okay, so that is one type of cell inside the flow of tissue. Now, the next type of cell is called companion cell, trend cell. Well, it's because it's next to and closely associated with the sieve tube element. So if this is a sieve tube member, this is a companion cell. This is us looking from the top to the bottom again. Now, um, it has several features here. You can see there's a lot of mitochondria going around this diagram. And the reason is it needs ATP. Uh, we'll find out more in part two of why it needs so much ATP. Uh, it's because translocation involves some active transport, to be honest, but we'll see this in more detail later. They have many ribosomes as well because many proteins and channel proteins are needed in order for active transport, and carrier proteins as well for active transport, yeah. Sorry, channel proteins for facilitated diffusion, carrier transport proteins for active transport. Uh, there's a lot of Asma does mark down also across cell walls between the sieve tube and companion cells. So you can expect the same for companion cells so that you can transport things through them. That's it. Right, companion cells in a uh, closer look, you can see here that the new from the nucleus, so this is a sieve tube. Um, you can see these areas with nucleus around them. And that's because that's the companion cell. Companion cell has nucleus, whereas sieve tube doesn't have. You can see this sieve plate here, so you know that these larger ones are probably sieve tubes. And you can see um, these smaller cells which contain the nucleus at the side. These are the companion cells. Okay, um, again, you can see that ones with nucleus called companion cells right here as well. So in conclusion, we have two types of tissues. We have the xylem and the phloem. Xylem transports water and mineral ions, actually. Phloem transports assimilates. Assimilates are essentially organic molecules. Um, in xylem, there's no end walls between cells. They break down. Whereas phloem have seed plates. In xylem, okay, this is an extra point here, which we will highlight that later as well. It's only a one-way transport, it's, from, it's upwards from the roots to the leaves, and it never comes back down, right? it always just goes up. Whereas phloem can be both ways, of course one way in each phloem. Okay? So it's a two-way movement, it could be up, it could be down. Xylem are dead, non-living cells, whereas phloem are living cells. And together with them, there is the companion cells, which are also living cells and very necessary for the function of the flow of tissue. So yeah, that's it. For plant anatomy, yay. Okay, but before we end, let's give you a quick teaser to um, next video which is about transport of water and stuff. Okay, so imagine a plant, now you know all the anatomy, and if you don't, there's a quiz, you test your knowledge. Right, the main substance transport is this. One, gases. Two, products of synthesis. Right, there are mineral ions, there's water. Okay, and there's a lot there more, but it's like the main substances. And in general, plants do have a slower transport than animals. Well, compared to us, right? They have much lower transport. Why? They don't need it. They have a lower requirement, energy, oxygen, respiration, all very low. So let's look at how they transport things, okay? So for gases, you don't need a complex system because it's using simple diffusion. They don't respire as quickly as us. They don't do a lot of things. They don't move. So they are fine, right? Using simple diffusion. So, leaves are thin and flat, they have a branching shape and a network of air spaces, which is very important. 
often, that means it has a very high surface area to fall under issue already. It doesn't need a lungs, it doesn't need a pump or a circulation system, it's okay. It's effective enough for their diffusion and their needs. There's no specialized transport system here. But let's guess, you need to transport systems uh, for part one, which is water and ions. And this is what we explore in the next video. From the root, to, to the xylem, to the atmosphere. So root, from the soil, to the root, to the xylem, to the atmosphere, we'll see later. And of course, there is also products of synthesis that you need to transport. For example, sucrose and other assimilates from source to flow and to sink. And this will be covered in part two. So stay tuned, things are exciting in plants. Um, I sort of love it. Um, I didn't like it at first, to be honest. But I think the more I learn, the more interesting it gets. So I'll see you next video. Bye!